Glory to God. Thank you so much. Beautiful, beautiful. Praise God. The gifts that God has given us, we must use them and express them as they bless others and heal our souls. We come to you this day giving honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Father. We want to thank Pastor Jenkins and James Memorial, United Methodist Church, family, friends, for the opportunity to be able to come and share this message that God has given me. My prayer is that it will be received. So let us pray. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we come before you today. And Father, we ask that you would see that the word, Father God, would go forth and that it would fall on good ground, fertile ground. And we ask, Lord God, that it would bring forth much fruit in the kingdom of heaven. May you bless us and strengthen us, O Lord God. Hide me, O Lord God, in your secret and bring forth your word. In Jesus Christ, thank you. Today, is a mother's love. A mother's love is God's special treasure. We read the scripture, but we're going to look as an introduction. I want to tell you why. I want to tell you why he is our God. If we look in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 20 to 23, we find that Adam had gave things all of the animals, and God had provided every animal that was possible, and he named them all, and thinking that this would bring him company, and this would bring him fulfillment. But it says in 20, but still, there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs, his ribs, and closed up the opening. We are made from the inside. Everything about us, being a woman, is on purpose. We're not surface dwellers. We are not surface dwellers. But we were made from deep within. We are full of love and compassion. And we desire to be loved and to have compassion. We love deeply. We love very deeply. We are emotional. And God formed us and he gave us every emotion with a purpose. Then on 22 it says, Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib." and brought her to the man. Now, when you think about it, he was already made. And God could have taken a bone from his leg, his arm, thigh, whatever. But God chose to take it from the rib bone. So we have to think, why did God take it from the rib bone in order to form woman. And as you think about it, you find out that it is the rib bone that protects the vital organs of the body, the heart and the lungs. It protects, it surrounds the heart and the lungs. These are vital, vital organs. It is in the blood. It is in the bone that the blood is made for the whole body. It is in the blood, in the bone, that the blood is made for the whole body. Your blood 
is replenished is replenished daily. Your body makes about two million two million red blood cells every second. Oh, we're important. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> At last the man said on twenty three now this is bone of my bone and, and flesh of my flesh. She will be called a woman uh, because she was taken taken from man. She is called woman because she came from the womb of God's surgery. Hallelujah. She is called woman in Hebrew language of the Old Testament. The word for compassion comes from the root word womb, W-O-M-B, womb, oh my, wool man was given a womb. We were given a womb. We are the ones that were made from the weak Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are special because God gave us this womb, and this womb is the place from which all mankind comes. All mankind comes from the womb. God placed in us a womb that totally supplies protection, nourishment for nine months to birth our offspring. Through the connection of the cord, the umbilical cord, our blood and baby's blood are one in the same. So we supply the blood to the baby up until the umbilical cord is cut. When the umbilical cord is cut, the baby when the baby takes its first breath, first breath the baby takes, their own blood, blood supply starts and ours is shut off. This is all God's design. When a woman prays, God answers for a mother. We're talking about a baby that has been in your womb for nine months, and there is a connection called an umbilical cord. There is a cord that connects you to them for nine months, and you are the one that blesses them and provides nourishment for them and strengthens them and allows them to grow inside that womb. You are connected with them. You are connected with them. And not just them, but with all mankind, male and female. It is not just a thing of saying, my children, but sometimes we are to know that as women, we have been given the connection that when we pray, something happens because of the compassion and the love that is within us. God moves. God moves for us. We will always spiritually be connected to the offspring. Always. I don't care if they're 80, 40, 50, 30, 100. You're always going to be connected. Even though the cord is cut physically, spiritually, you are connected. And it is through the spiritual connection that we are able to bring healing into the lives of others. Glory to God. It might be your aunt. It might be your niece. It might be your sister. It might be your neighbor. It might be your friend. But the whole thing is that when we, as women of God, get down on our knees and pray, something happens because we were given a connection. 
a connection. Glory to God. God has a plan. He has a plan. He gave us breath that supplies nutrition to the offspring anywhere from two to five years. They can survive after birth on breast milk two to five years. And the way that that works is on supply and demand. As they have a need, your body will supply. As they grow and they need more milk, your body will supply. What is it? Who needs help? What's going on? Get on your knees. There's a demand there. You will supply knowing that your eyes are on God, the author and the finisher of your faith. He will move on your behalf. Because you have a connection with mankind. Glory to God. Two to five years on breast milk. Glory to God. Even a mother, even a woman that is a surrogate mother can produce milk and didn't have physically you have in slavery time, and who knows, it could be still going on now. You have to feed wet nurse. That's what a wet nurse is. She supplies milk for the master's kids. And when that happens, there's a connection. She loves them, even though they are the master's kids, and they don't have, didn't come from her. But she loves them. They nurse at her breast. My God. Know who you are, women. You have a connection. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We must get that principle in. Love and compassion heals others. We are wonderfully and creatively made. Everything about us is, is God's purpose. We are the ones that bring life to us. We, when we get on our knees, something happens. Glory to God. It said in Matthew fourteen fourteen that Jesus saw a huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them, and he healed all that were sick. Compassion, love. Compassion, love. What did he say? Love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and love your neighbors as yourself. That person over there, that person over there as yourself, but that's vitally important for women because you carry the connection that will get that prayer through. You are the one that brings healing and blessings into their lives. Oh, glory to God. A mother's love is God's special treasure that is given into the earth. The story goes that the woman of Shuna was a wealthy woman. And she had her home and her husband. And the man of God, Elisha, would come by every now and then. And when he would come by, she would fit a meal for him. She would be hospitable and fix a meal for him. So finally one day she said to her husband, Let, uh, what do you think about us building a uh, room for the prophet onto our house so that when he comes through, he can not only eat a meal, but he can spend the night. And we get him a chair and we get him a table 
so he can sit if he wants to write or whatever he likes to do. So praise God, the husband said, okay. And sure enough, they built a room. They made a place for the prophet. I ask you, have you made a place for God? Have you made a place in your life that he's able to come whenever he wants or a place where you're able to go to him whenever you want? Do you have a place for the man of God, for God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in your life? And so... Finally, he was coming through. He continued to come through for a while, and then she had beautiful accommodations for him. And he told her, he asked, first he asked, first he asked her, is there anything that you need? She said, no, I don't need anything. I have everything I need. I don't need anything. So then she went to her servant, Gehazi, to his servant. The prophet's servant's name is Gehazi. And so she went to him and said, do you know anything that she may have need of? And he said, well, her husband is old, and they don't have a son. They don't have a child. So the man of God went to the woman and said, this time, he spoke it into her life. God gave it to him. This time, next year, you will have a son. And sure enough, she's like, oh, no, don't kid me. Don't kid me. Are you for real? But sure enough, she did have a son. One day, her child was older, a little bit older, and he went out to help his father in the harvest, with the harvest workers. And suddenly he cried out, my head, my head, my head, my head hurts. His father said to one of the servants, you got the connection. The father said to one of the servants, take him home to his wife. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? His son was hurt. He couldn't stop to take him to his mother. He called the servant to take him to his mother. He knew. He knew. He don't have a connection. But he knew who she was. Hallelujah. He knew that she was the one that if he was sick, that's where he should go. Glory to God. She took him home. The servant took him home. Well, the mother let him sit on her lap on the porch. So noon time, 12 o'clock noon. And then he died. He died. And she picked him up, and she took him where? Upstairs. And laid him on the bed of the prophet. What do you do when you come into the problem? What do you do when you come into a situation that is beyond you? You take it to the Lord. You take it to God. She took it to the prophet, laid him on his bed. Then she left out, and she shut the door. And I say to you, in the Bible it says when you pray, go in. Shut the door. Just you and God. You and God. And you Thank God. You talk, you listen. You talk, you listen. Glory to God. But she went and she told the servant, 
Go tell my husband to send me a donkey. Send me a donkey. Because I got to go hurry. I have to go in a hurry to the man of God. Her husband said, well, why? Why are you going, honey? Uh, it's not a festival. It's not a Sabbath day. Why are you going to the man of God? But look at how she answered. It will be all right. It is well. It is well with my soul. Glory to God. It is well. She knew that she had to go, and she was in a hurry. Because there are some situations uh, that we have to be in a hurry about, uh, and we got to get into the presence of God so that we can hear from him, uh, so that he can hear us as we pray. So she went on off, and she told them to speed up and don't slow down unless I tell you to. My God. He finally, the prophet, Elisha, sees her coming from the distance. So he tells his servant, Gehazi, to go ask her, is everything all right with your child? Is everything all right with your husband? (laughs) And once again, he says, all is well. And at the same time, she's going to see the man of God. She's like, I have to see the man of God. But until then, I will not speak death. I will speak life. I will not speak death. I will speak life on this situation. She knew that he was dead. But she didn't say it to her husband, and she didn't say it to Gehazi, because she wanted to go before the Lord. She wanted to get in contact with God, the one that has spoke that promise, the one who said, I will give you a child. Everything that we have comes from God. Everything that we have comes from God. You don't work for it. I know you think you did. You didn't plan on having the kids and, 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 and you got pregnant. I'm telling you, everything from children to everything comes from God. And when you begin to realize that, then when you have a problem and you go to him, it is he is the one that will straighten things out for you. He will put things in order, and he will bless you. Glory to God. But she had this connection with her son that was there laying on the bed. And we find that that is such a blessing, and this is why a lot of times in the house of God you see more women than you do see men. It is because of the fact of the way that God created us. We give our whole heart, and we will testify, and we will tell you what God has done in our lives. We don't have no problem with that. And we will give him praise, and we will give him glory. And we have the spirit of love and compassion, and we are submissive. Hallelujah. We have a spirit of submissiveness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we thank God for the man because of what he has been given. But since it's not Men's Day, we're not going to talk about how great the man is today. But he has an authority that he can speak things and make them happen because of who God made him to be. Praise God. Remember, he is the head, and we are the next. But when we listen to God and follow him, God 
can get that head to turn by way of the next. Ah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. We are made with a purpose to love, to heal, to teach, to share, and to share the love of God with others and bring healing into their lives. Hallelujah. Life from her womb was from God. As mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, aunties, surrogate mothers, godmothers, moms, foster mothers, cousins, and nieces, nieces, you are a female. You have a womb, a place of love and compassion. You can get a prayer through. Hallelujah. As women of God, God has called us to be God moms, moms to everybody. We are God moms to everybody. Everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know how to push and to push and to seek God. We know that he hears our hearts even before we act in situations. So she was in a hurry, and she wanted to see the man of God. As she approached the man of God, Elisha, and he saw her in the distance, he wanted Gehazi, he told Gehazi to go meet her and to take his staff and put his staff onto the boy's face. And she said, no way. No way. No, no, no. See, I, I don't want any false gods. I don't want any substitutes. I don't want any Buddha. I don't want any Islam. I want the living and the true God. This man, you, the servant did not tell me that I would have a child next year. God told me through you that I would have a child next year, and I will not leave you until you go with me to my house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when he got there, it was awesome. He laid on the boy. He got up. He walked through the room. He went back again and laid on him again. The boy sneezed seven times. The boy woke up. He called, told Gehazi to call his mother and tell her, come and get your son. Because of her persistence, because of her speaking life, it happened because of the connection. It happened. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's a Spanish proverb that says, "An ounce of mother is worth more than a ton of priests." <laughs> and we think about even the woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years and how she pressed her way. And she said, if I can just touch, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. Glory to God. My sister, touch the hem of his garment when you have your knees. Go up and cry unto him and get on your knees and he will hear you. You are God's love, a special treasure in the earth to move mountains. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Remember, it was Jesus' mother. I said it was Jesus' mother that caused him to do the first miracle the very first miracle at the wedding of Cana. The wedding of Cana. The wine supply had ran out during the party, during the festival. So his mother said to them, because why? She had concern. She wanted to be sick. 
He wanted them to have a good time and to have everything that they needed. Everything. Glory to God. So his mother is the one that said, they have no more wine. Dear woman, he says to his mom, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not come yet. But as his mother, <laughs> because of the connection, yeah, 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 yeah. He told them to go. He told the servants, you go do whatever he tells you to do. Glory to God. Because she was moved with compassion and love to help some people out. And guess what? It might not have been Jesus' time, but guess what? He responded. He will always respond to you. He will respond to you in your financial situation. He will respond to you in a medical situation. He will respond to you in disease, sickness, emotional situations, family, legal matters, and business matters. He will respond to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He is the God who loves and sees and hears you. He is the God who knows your every pain and your sorrow. When you look at Hagar, here she is a concubine of Abraham. And Sarah gets impatient. God told Abraham he would have a son and that he would have a son. But he became, he became impatient. She became impatient, so she says, okay, Hagar, I want you to go sleep with my husband. As a result, this probably was a young girl because Sarah was old. Amen? So as a result of that, she did... um, there was a lot of tension going on because you now you have your husband is sleeping with the concubine because of the fact that Abraham Abraham decided to say okay to Sarah's idea. But anyway, as a result, we find that there was so much tension and so much stress that she ran away. She ran away into the wilderness. But you know what? God meets you in the wilderness. He met her there, and he provided for her there in her wilderness experience. And he said, guess what, Hagar? We, I, know you're running from, I know you're running from your mistress who's treating you bad. But guess what? I got a blessing for you. First of all, I am going, you're going to have a son soon. You're pregnant right now. You're pregnant right now, and you're going to have a son, and you're going to name him Ishmael. And Ishmael means God hears. Woo, do you hear that? God hears you. He saw her pain. He saw her and named him a son that said, God hears you. And as a result, she said, this is the God. From then on, she said, this is the God who sees me. He sees me. He sees me when I was rejected. He sees me when I was abused and misused. He sees me when I felt unloved. He sees me when I felt hopeless. And be changed. Glory to God. He sees me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God knows 
the pain, the dreams deferred. God knows the loss of loved ones. God knows about the failed expectations and the failed marriages and failed business adventures. He knows about the rejection. He knows about the isolation. And what does he say? I hear you and I see you. God knows your pain. Your pain is real, regardless of the source. But God Almighty sees me and he sees you. There will always be a spring of water in your wilderness experience because you belong to him who was, who is, and shall come again. This spring of refreshing water of life, it is for renewal. It is for refreshing. For God reveals his blessing in your adversity. I said God reveals his blessing in your adversity. I said God reveals his blessing in your adversity. Hallelujah. After a while of going through one trial after the other and seeing the hand of the provision that God makes in every situation and relationship, our, God, our faith deepens for him. Hallelujah. You will begin to see that the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. The Bible says in Psalm 34, 8, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see. Just watch the Lord turn those stumbling blocks planted by the enemy, turn into stepping stones for you. As you keep your mind on what is good and lovely and a good report, God will bring forth your righteousness as a new day. And your light will shine. Do not become overcome with evil, being done wrong. I said being done wrong. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Watch out. Let no poisonous root of bitterness grow up and trouble you. God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Your name is written in the palm of my hand. He, he said, God says in Isaiah 48, 15 to 18, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion in the child that, he, that she has born? Though she may be a little crazy, though she may forget, he said, I will not forget you. See, he says, look, see, I have engraved you on the palm of my hand. And your walls are ever before me. Your sons hasten back, and those who laid you, those who laid you wait, depart from you. Lift up your eyes and look around. All your sons are gathering to come to you. You see, there's four points here. Number one, I will not forget you. God relates his relationship with us as a mother with who breastfed her child. Number one. Number two, he has engraved you on the palm of his hands and our situation and our circumstances and our safety for our good he looks out for always be, are before him. Verse 3, your support of your welfare is coming back to you. All that takes care of you, all that you have need of, be it love, be it finances, is coming back to you because your enemies are going to be removed. And then on 4, he says, lift up your eyes. Lift up your head. You are blessed. Stop looking at the negatives and start looking at the positives and give God the glory. Give him the honor and give him the praise. Hallelujah. For you are more than a conqueror. It is the risen Christ. 
that put the enemy under your feet, according to the power that works in you. But how do you get that power? On your knees. Hallelujah. You are strong women made with great spiritual strength. Women from the womb, from the rib bone. Hallelujah. Others are depending on you. Behold, I give you power, he said in Luke 10, 19, to tread, to walk on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means, it said, I mean, it said any means hurt you. Our battles turn into victories for our crowns and development as we are God's special treasure of love. We can say like Paul in Romans 5, 3 to 5, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us to develop endurance, and endurance develops strength and character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. I said this hope will not lead to disappointment. I said this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how God really loves us, and the Holy Spirit fills our hearts with that love. Because you are the God who sees and hears us. Glory to God. A mother's love is God's special treasure. There is a connection. Just give me a few more minutes. There is a connection and a bonding that takes place between a mother and her offspring that is harder than cement more binding than any crazy glue. It is stronger, stronger than steel, softer than down, and more powerful than any dynamite. She knows, she is intuitive. She can feel her children's joys and their pain, whether they are a day old or whether they are 100 years old. A mother's children and grandchildren are the apple of her eye. Always the apple, even though they may bring her heart grief, sorrow, or pain. Mothers and grandmothers love unconditionally whether they are good or not. They love them. When the love that they have for them is not reciprocated in any way, that's all right. Because this is godly love. This is godly love. Godly love doesn't look for nothing. Glory to God. It's not manipulative. Most times, most times, men most times may not understand it unless they have been a recipient of true mother's love. Otherwise, it could be misunderstood by you. A mother's love is selfless and, and sacrificial love. There is no love on earth as selfless as sacrificial as the gift of a mother or grandmother's love. We are women, God's special treasure of love. Mothers, women always think of the offspring first and their self second. An example, this is just a little example, a mother can get offended by something her husband said or did or did not do, and she will not fix him dinner and let him fend for himself and walk away. A mother can be offended deeply by their child. Will prepare a meal and see that the child eats. And has shelter regardless of the offense. She will protect them as best as she can. Because being a mother is a gift of love and immeasurable love. This is going to help you. This is the last page here. This is going to help you. This is the depth. I, I want you to see the depth of a mother's love. This is a story of a young mother that was making her way across the hills of South Wales, carrying her tiny baby in her arms when she was overtaken by a blinding blizzard. 
She never reached her destination. And when the blizzard had subsided, her body was found by searchers beneath a mound of snow. But they discovered that before her death, she had taken off her outer clothing and wrapped it around the little one. When they unwrapped the child, to their great surprise, the joy, the joy, the little one was alive and well. She had mound her body over the child and had given her life for the child's life to live, for the child to live, proving the depth of a mother's love. Years later, that child, who was David Lloyd George, crowned uh, grown into a manhood, grown into manhood, became prime minister of Great Britain and one of England's greatest states. Oh, a mother's love. The depth of a mother's love. She gave up her life that his purpose could be fulfilled. The depth of a mother's love. This is the last story. Solomon Rosenberg and his family during the Holocaust. During the Holocaust, Solomon Rosenberg and his wife and two sons and his mother and his father were arrested and placed in a Nazi con uh, concentration camp. It was a labor camp, and the rules were simple. As long as you can work, as long as you can do your work, you were permitted to live. And when you became too weak to do your work, when you were exterminated, Rosenberg watched his mother and his father march off to their death. And he knew that next it would be their youngest son, David, because he had always been frail, a frail child. So every evening when Rosenberg would go back to the camp, he would look for his family. They would huddle up together and embrace each other and thank God for another day. One day, Mr. Rosenberg came back into the camp, and the oldest son, Joshua, was in the corner, cuddled up, weeping and praying. His father said, what happened, Joshua? Joshua said that today David was not strong enough to do his work, so they came and got him. So Mr. Rosenberg said to Joshua, where is your mother? Joshua said, when they came for David, David began to cry, saying he was afraid. Mama said, there's nothing to be afraid of. I will go with you. And she took him by the hand and went with him to the gas tank. A mother's love is self-sacrificing love, unconditional love. A mother's love is God's special treasure to all of mankind. Amen. Amen. And amen. I just want to say that I don't know, I don't know where you are, where your relationship is, but first of all, make sure you got a place for him in yeah. your heart. Make sure that when something goes wrong, even if something doesn't go wrong, still visit that room often, that place in your heart. And when something goes, no matter whether it's finance or whatever, go to him. He hears you and he sees you. And he will deliver you out of all of your troubles. We are made this way by God. We have a connection to be a blessing and a healing yeah. to all mankind. And if there's any woman here that says, I, I, I need to renew, I need to renew my, my strength. I, I need the Lord God to touch me. I, I need, oh, Lord God, to you to pull me back again. Because this world is falling. This world is dying. I ask you to think about Renewing your strength. Hallelujah.